Welcome to Pixelated Therapy, where we like to take the subjects of grief and video games and to show the connection that you can find in both mediums. Recently, I did a research video for an online game called Hello Doggy. The game has you play as a recently deceased pupper, and your task before being freed from this mortal coil is to bring some peace to your owners. Each of the three is suffering from some form of grief. And having had the chance to play the game multiple times, let's try to unpack whatever lessons we can find about the subject of grief from Hello Doggy. The first thing that I think that's important for us to point out is that grief looks different on each person. You have three characters with three different responses to the same event. At first, all seem to be the same as they are all filled with grief, sadness, if you will. As you progress, you're going to notice certain differences. The chef is having a hard time fixing bread and finding energy to do the dishes. After those tasks are completed, the sadness shifts to some anger within this individual and then despair. In the upper left-hand bedroom, you have a child who is sad and unwilling, uh, unmotivated to do homework. Shortly thereafter, the child is reminded of good times with the dog and the mood shifts to some sort of happiness. In the right-hand bedroom, you have a character who is unable to do work on the house. This later turns to extreme indecision in, in, in what would be even some of the uh, easiest decisions to make. But then some happiness occurs you have three different characters each showing different signs and grief is much the same way we often refer to the five or seven stages of grief as popularized by elizabeth kubler ross the five stages are denial anger bargaining depression acceptance and these stages were first theorized by elizabeth kubler ross a swiss psychiatrist as she worked with terminal patients now at first, these five stages were used exclusively of those who were facing imminent death. Over time, the theory, theory began to be popularized with any type of grief. But over time, we've realized that this is not the case. In her book on grief and grieving, Finding Meaning of Grief Through the Five Stages of Loss, Kubler-Ross wrote, the stages have evolved since their introduction, and they have been very misunderstood over the past three decades. They were never meant to help tuck messy emotions into neat packages. They are responses to loss that many people have, but there is not a typical response to loss, as there is no typical loss. Our grief is as individual as our lives. The five stages, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, are a part of the framework that makes up our learning to live with the one we lost. They are tools to help us frame and identify what we may be feeling, but they are not stops on some linear timeline in grief. Not everyone goes through all of them or goes in a prescribed order. Our hope is that with these stages comes the knowledge of grief's terrain, making us better equipped to cope with life and loss. Well, we see this in this game as we have three different characters reacting to the death of their good boy. Nothing is clearly black and white about these characters. So there's one lesson we can learn. Grief is different for every person. But I think we also need to pay attention to the fact that grief takes time. Now, this one may not be so easily seen, but there is something I do want to point out at the very end of the game. When your character has given help to his former owners, he ascends up to heaven. After all, all dogs go to heaven. What about the people down below? Is everything okay? Has the grief gone away? Absolutely not. I've compared the way that we often treat grief, depression, sadness, you know, any of these issues to a television show from the 70s or 80s. I refer to these shows as a very special episode of. These shows would often air episodes that 
focused on alcohol use, depression, suicide, drugs, premarital sex, things of that nature. And there's one episode I can remember clearly in my mind. It's Growing Pains. In the show, uh, the young female main character uh, makes friends with a student at her school who's played by Matthew Perry. They go to a party where drinking is involved. He drives her home while under the influence and drives back to his home, and there he is in a car accident. As medical advisors uh, study over him to diagnose if there are any broken bones or things of that nature, they find that externally, and as far as bones are concerned, there are no major issues. And they believe he should be fine. Well, in the process of the night, Matthew Perry's character died because of internal injuries, internal bleeding. And so there's great sadness to be found in our main character. Alan Thicke's character, her father, ends up having a discussion with her about the decisions this young man made and the decisions she made, as well as explaining the fact that life doesn't always work as nice and neat as we would like it to. That stood out in my mind because of the fact that it's one of the most realistic discussions I have ever seen in one of these TV shows. Here's the thing, though. Within the next episode, there's no mention of Matthew Perry's character. There's no grief or sadness on the part of our female lead. They continue on as if nothing had ever happened, which has always been my problem with these episodes because it's as if it never occurred. And the reality is, if something of that nature had happened, there would have been a major focus to an extent over time in the life of this young woman. The realization that she could have easily died, the realization that he is dead, but it never happens. That's what tends to happen in these episodes. Sage wisdom is given, and in the next episode, there's no indication that anything bad had ever happened. Everything was a-okay. The reality is that the problems of life are not solved in 30 minutes counting commercials. This is true for grief. I can only speak for the American society, but there, there is something that is being pushed and has been pushed for a long time that I do not like. There's this push of the idea that an individual needs to be over their grief in three business days or less because we cannot have an individual within our society who is not as productive as we would like them to be. And the thing is, when you push this type of societal norm and you push for a person to act a certain way regarding something like grief, they now have more pressure on them because within three days they're not over it. In three days, they're starting to question, is something wrong with me? Am I going crazy? Am I insane? They begin, they, they, they start being nervous talking to people because they may receive the question, why aren't you over this yet? And I know plenty of people who have been told that, who have been grieving the loss of a loved one for months. I know people who have left their work because their bosses were telling them, you should be over this by now. Well, what loss was it? They lost a child. But they should have been over it within a few months. It is expected that grief goes away eventually, but the reality is that grief really doesn't go away. It just smooths over. We learn how to better cope with that loss. We need to realize that grief, though, takes time. And the last thing I want us to note from this game is that grief is normal. Now, this may be a hard pill for us to swallow, but grief is absolutely normal. I would dare say that we treat it abnormal for just a few reasons. And there's probably more than I'm about to mention. I'm only going to discuss two. We are uncomfortable with our own emotions. As much as I hate Frozen, there is a comparison of Elsa to our society today. 
the mentality of conceal, don't feel. Why? I think one thing is that we're not comfortable with the emotions we have. And a lot of that is because we don't understand our emotions. <clears throat> we need to normalize the idea that we have emotions. We feel happiness. We feel joy. We feel pain. We feel sorrow. We feel anger. Those are normal emotions to have. There is a time in which it is right and proper for me as a man to cry, to show tears. There's a time when it's right and proper for me to show anger when I'm grieving. And I may never show it, but it's still right and proper if, you know, I'm grieving for her anger to come up. Grief are these emotions that we have inside of us intensified. And if we're uncomfortable with, the, with just these base emotions, when they're intensified, we are even more uncomfortable with them. And that could go along with the stigma within our society about emotions, things of that nature, but that, that's for a video for another time. But we're uncomfortable with our emotions. Another one could be that we do not want to be vulnerable. And this somewhat works hand in hand with the above statement. But showing grief is to make myself vulnerable before others. And this is a problem that I have had in the past. Here's a little transparency. With my current job, I am, at times, very involved in funerals. For me, this is a very draining process, especially when the deceased is a close friend. I have felt in the past that I cannot allow myself to show my emotions, not because I am uncomfortable with them. I found comfort in the emotions that I have but rather it's because I had a job to do and I felt that I could not make myself vulnerable to those who are already vulnerable. And what I found is that when I hold that mentality, by the end of the day, I am absolutely wrought with depression. But we just don't want to make ourselves feel vulnerable. What we should do is we should normalize showing grief. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and, and when I say ugly, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that grief is ugly. But remember, grief is intensified emotions. So for some of us, in order to show our emotions, we're showing them in a much stronger fashion. We should normalize the woman standing by the casket very quietly crying. We should normalize, and, and I know you may laugh when I say this, the woman who's screaming, no, let me go with them, let me go with them, because that's, you know, the emotion they have, the grief that they're showing. We should not view these actions in a negative fashion or mock those who are doing this. All of this is grief. Grief is normal. These are just three base lessons that I want us to learn from the video game Hello Doggy. I recently read a YouTube comment which referred to grief as love which doesn't know where to go. And while this may not always be true, Hello Doggy can teach us valuable lessons on the subject of grief and maybe even realize to a certain extent that what we're facing is a normal thing and that in time it does get better. Let's be open to learning and growing and even growing with others as they learn about the issues they're facing. As always, I want to say, love one another, help one another, God bless you all, and as always, game in good health.